book, Give War and Peace a Chance. He also spearheaded a program called Books Behind Bars, which introduces Russian literature to young men who are incarcerated at the Beaumont Juvenile Correctional Facility in Beaumont, Virginia. Doug Avila is a former resident of the facility. And, Doug, I know in July of 2012 uh, you robbed two women at a local supermarket. You were incarcerated uh, for robbery and grand larceny. Right. Um, you... Were, you spent, I guess, a year and a half behind bars. What was that like for you? Um, it's really depressing and it's it's lonely. You don't you have nothing but time for yourself, and it just it you see it's what you see on TV. You see the the bars, you see the gates, you see the barbed wire. I was kind of jealous of other inmates because my window, all I saw was barbed wire, and they had this view of the sun, the hill, the little lake, trees. All I could see was barbed wire. How old were you during this period? Seventeen. Seventeen years old. And and I know that you participated in Books Behind Bars. Tell me about your experience with the program. Well, the program is excellent. Like, you see college kids, and if you're into college like I am, and I am in college, um, you have intelligent conversations, you, you, you're really into it. Like, you're not... I, you don't talk about the sex. You don't talk about killing. You don't kill about. You don't talk about crime. You talk about actually college. You can have intelligent conversations with these kids, and I feel like I was human. Like I didn't feel like I was locked up. And you I, also got a chance to talk about literature. You know, to yeah. me, which is probably something that normally you would never imagine discussing, in in a facility like you were in. Was there any story that particularly resonated with you? Yeah, um, it was called Crime and Punishment from Fyodor Dostoevsky, if I'm saying it correct. And um, it talked about a guy that murdered, but I didn't murder anyone, obviously. But it talked about a crime, that's the moral, and he didn't get away with it, but it, it, the detective basically was, you know, on his back because he felt like he knew that the detective knew that he killed the killer. And so the moral of the story is that he did a crime, he paid for it, he turned himself in, and I can relate to that because he got locked up, I got locked up, both did a crime, and you got to pay for it. And and does this validate, Andrew, your, your feelings that this literature can speak to everyone no matter what situation they may be in, no matter where and when they're living? Absolutely. I, I was, actually, I was teary-eyed this morning when I saw Doug because I didn't know if he was going to be here and it was a powerful experience for me because there are other Dougs out there who go through this program who have said that once a week they feel like a human being and not like a criminal and that's because they're being taken seriously as students, as learners, as people that have something of value to contribute to conversations about life and literature. They're not being treated as criminals and they're proving that they're that, that, that they're not. Do you feel like this program really changed your life? Absolutely. When I was, before I got incarcerated, I didn't feel like, I didn't feel as smart. Like, I taught myself when I was, like, in this program, I learned Russia. I even read Crime and Punishment when I went home. I read it again. Really? Yeah, like, it's really powerful. And I learned a, I learned a lot from the program, and I'm just thankful. And I know that you were released in December of 2013, so... Tell us what you're doing today. I'm currently a college student at a community college in Northern Virginia. And, uh, and um, I'm actually working. I'm a student. Um, my major is fine arts. Uh, I'm studying to be an interior designer. I love drawing. That's all I did in jail and play chess by myself. But um, <laughs> And so I also work at a grocery store. It's ironic. But, um, and... Um, I'm doing that. I'm a produce clerk, and it's basically what I'm doing. It sounds like you've got your act together in a big way. Absolutely. And, and Andrew, this must feel just wonderful for you to see. I'm sure there are many other Dugs out there yeah. who whose lives you've touched through your program and who now are moving forward in a much more productive way. Well, one, it's and it's not just me. I mean, I started the program, but it's really the relationship with the students, with Kamala and Jackie and the other students. They do the heavy lifting. You know, my my partner and I, we just get the, the ship running with the students, run the ship, and they develop these relationships. And 
you know, student, residents have been inspired to go to college, you know, like, like Doug. They take themselves seriously as, as, you know, as students. They talk about how the messages that Russian literature contains about compassion and love and courage. I mean, they've been hearing these messages their whole lives, but they would go in one, one ear and out the other. But when you talk about them in a very personal way through literature, with peers your own age, those messages come alive. And these are some of the things that, that we've been hearing from former residents who've gone through this program. Well, you're proof positive that this is having a real impact. Doug and Andrew, Mala and Jackie, thank you all for telling us about Books Behind Bars, and good luck. Thank you.